All right, guys, we're like five days away from going to Gunnersville, and what my last four or five days have consisted of, really it's only been like two or three days, and I've been going fishing some in the middle, so I'm not being too honest, but building these rods right here. You know, before we went up to the Northern Swing, I built me three more spinning rods, or maybe four more. Anyways, I went up to the Northern Swing with like six spinning rods, most I've had in my life, and now we got the Southern Swing going on, big line, you know, a lot of swim jig and frogs, stuff like that, a lot of flipping, so I'm building me a bunch of extra flipping rods, and this right here is actually going to be the specific rod that i keep my new signature series jig on all the time it's a seven foot three heavy i'm building like three of these before we head out and go you know this is the rod i throw a horny toad on a swim jig i throw you know like if i'm throwing a smaller frog i'll throw it on this if i'm you know flipping almost anything that's not half ounce weight or bigger i'll throw it on this if i'm you know this is just like my seven foot three heavies what i throw a lot of stuff on and then obviously i'm building some seven foot six heavies and then one cranking rod so getting everything dialed in just take a look at this sucker this thing i'm not a huge fan of red but this thing absolutely turned out insane so because i don't have a power wrapper my epoxy work is not perfect but it did turn out looks really really good on this one got a couple imperfections in the wrap but for the most part turned out absolutely phenomenal i love the way these rods feel i love everything about these rods i just cannot get over it. every time i pick one of these suckers up without a reel on it it literally blows my mind because i'll get you so used to feeling how they feel with a six or seven ounce reel on them whenever i finally pick one up that's just bare god it feels so good so this right here is going to be the seven foot three heavy fast rod this is going to be the exact rod that i keep my secret series jig on this is the hook keeper i like for a jig i feel like the jig does not bounce out of this hook keeper whereas the flipping style like i'm going to show you on the next rod does split grip I've got the SK2 reel seat. That's the way I like to do it. Keep it extra, extra light. This rod has a ton of power and it's extremely light. We go straight to an LRV number six guide. What this does, it's a little bit elevated so it gives you a smooth transition from your reel straight down to your next guide. So from there we go to a couple of Bigfoot number four runner guides. I've actually got three of them. That just gives your rod a little bit more rigidity and makes your rod a little bit more durable long term. And then we've got like I think it's seven Number four, small foot running guides. Keeps the tip of the rod extremely light. And then number four, uh, size tip with my little orange accent on it. That's the exact rod that I'm going to be keeping my Singer Series jig on. Love this thing. Same rod, throw a horny toad on, swim jig, stuff like that. All right, so this right here is a seven foot six flipping rod. This is the exact same rod that I caught. Not the exact same rod, but exact same build that I caught the 10-pounder on on St. John's River. That is the flipping hook keeper I like. You don't have to take your hook out of the plastic to get through that ring, and it keeps your bait preserved, and you can go extremely quickly. Same exact cork and split grip. I've got the same LRV number 6 elevated guide, and that's a big guide to go help the braid go through. And then from there, I go to, I've got like 6 or 7 Bigfoot 5.5 guides on here. That just lets the braid go through, especially if the braid swells when it's wet or picks up any particles. It can go through those bigger guides, and it also has a bigger foot. makes the rod a little bit more durable. Now, I've got three small foot, you know, number 5.5 guides, and a number 5 tip with my little orange accent like I like to do. So, 7 foot 6 flipping rod. This is actually going to be my punching rod. All right, so Hunter obviously has a notebook i'm guessing i gotta answer a few questions i have no idea what's happening right now but hunter's got a concept for a video i've been in there with rods on the rod wrapper just sitting there watching them spin around in circles so to get outside and actually talk to another human being is going to be nice and then hopefully we'll be able to get everything done and go fishing at least one day before we head to Gunnersville. so i don't know what's about to happen but i'm assuming looking at the notepad about to answer some questions so Hope y'all enjoy them. If y'all got any more questions, we might do this again. Leave a comment, some good questions for Hunter to ask me next time. Okay, question number one. Are right. you ready? Yeah, I am ready. Are you? Is it? This isn't a commercial for your is rod. Is this about how beautiful this rod is? I, I just love no. this rod right now. It's brand new. It's not dirty yet or anything. It's just so pretty. We'll talk about it. And that's that's it. It's just so brand new. The cork looks so good. The guides, the wraps, everything is just phenomenal on it. This is like what you pick up in a store. So. Right now it's nice. I know after I go put, you know, get the sucker under docks and throw it up in some mats and crap like that, it's going to be all dirty. But for right now, just enjoying it for a second. Okay, the comments are going to be flooded with, are you going to sell those? Because... Are you going to sell these rods? Yeah, they're going to be flooded with that for sure. So, Maybe in the off season. So Possibly. Your... I'll talk to... Uh, some people and see if I want to do it and then maybe in the off season when I have time I may build like 30 of these just to sell. They're going to be expensive though because these are a very high dollar blank titanium guides and I'm using you know all the best Fuji components so they will be a very very expensive rod but I may sell 20 or 30 of them in the off season if I have the customers for that I don't know yet 
Okay, question number one. Let's go. This is actually like, I've already asked questions, but this is question number one on right. notepad. Let's go. Let's go with it. What else do you need to have done before we can leave for Gunners? I have two more rods to wrap, one, and those two to epoxy. I got one to put one more coat of epoxy on, and then I've got to, I'm trying to get some lithium batteries in before then. I've got the new power pole charger. That thing is mind blowing. Literally day two of St. Clair, I forgot to plug my boat up all night. So day two of St. Clair, we plugged it up for like 45 minutes in the morning, and then throughout the day, the power pole charger charged my batteries up, and I never went dead. That was phenomenal. So I'm not too worried about the battery issues right now. So for the most part, I gotta get a little bit of wrap work done, and then get these rods fixed, get my boat organized. Organization is key, especially when you're practicing, to be really efficient out there on the water. You don't wanna waste your time looking for stuff. Gotta get super organized before we go. Get a couple more upriver rod sleeves in. So that's the plan before we go to New go to uh, Gunnersville, not New York. Thank God. Okay, question number two. Do you think you know what you'll be doing during practice and the tournament? For Gunnersville specifically, I do feel like I know what I'm gonna be doing. I have fished in Alabama a lot in September. And this is actually kind of the September, October, early fall kind of a deal going on. Very tough time of the year to fish, but I do have an idea of kind of what I like to do that time of year. Not gonna get too much into it, but uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of super finessey stuff and then a lot of extremely power fishing stuff. And I always like to cover a ton of water. Unless you can find the bait, I'll slow down. But I do have a good idea what I'm gonna do. I'm not going to uh, say that just yet, but hit that subscribe button and you will see about a week from now the videos will be out. Lake Gunnersville Bass Elite Series. Okay, so I have seen a lot of people talk about your experience on Gunnersville. Mm -hmm. Guntersville. That I sounded super country when yep. I said that. Okay, I need to know how many and how you have caught fish on Gunnersville before. So every time I've been to Gunnersville, um, I've only ever been there. We fished the Spro Frog Tournament there in 2018. Uh, ended up having a good finish there, but not much weight at all. I wasn't running the boat. We didn't go anywhere I wanted to go or anything like that. So uh, no experience there. That That's not going to help me at all. Fished a few club tournaments there whenever I was 16, 17, 18 years old. And uh, same deal. You know, the guy I fished with didn't know Gunnersville too well. I didn't know Gunnersville. We never had a lot of practice days. So we pretty much just got there, skipped docks all day, and tried to catch as much way we possibly could. So I literally have almost no experience on Gunnersville. As far as me driving the boat and actually exploring, I've got almost none. So I have effectively never really been to Gunnersville. So we ain't got no experience there. Okay, so what, since you have no experience, what are your weight predictions for four days? So to win the tournament four days, I'm thinking somewhere around 19 pounds. I believe that'll win. Uh, 18 and a half to 20 pounds so somewhere in the 19 range will probably win I'm thinking 70 74 you know something like that is probably gonna win or 74 to 76 something like that so I'm not sure on that it could take I mean it could turn on and they just start blowing up on shad and all the mats and everybody just busts them but for the most part I think it's gonna be really tough to get a lot of bites especially those three pounders so i'm thinking 19 pounds a day will probably win and to make a chip to, to make the good check and fish day three you're probably going to need 29 and a half to 30 something like 15 pounds a day probably do pretty well in that one um it could take 31 or 32 you know 16 pounds a day but i'm believing somewhere around 15 pounds a day will make you fish the third day okay next question what so we're halfway through the year pretty much mm, yeah we have four tournaments left four tournaments left yeah so what are your goals for the end of the year so the my goals for the year is just to so confidence is kind of low after coming back from new york i really thought i had some good game plans for a lot of these tournaments and i honestly feel like it just didn't work out i don't feel like i like got just out of my comfort zone and just got crushed i feel like it just kind of didn't work out so i really want to start strong on this southern swing and actually catch some in the first couple of tournaments, have some good momentum. And if I can catch them in the first couple of tournaments, it's going to make it very easy for me going to Chickamauga and for going to Santee Coop, and not Santee, going to Lake Fork to really, you know, take some risks because it's going to be relatively easy for me to make the classic if I have two really good events at the first two of these of this fall series. So I really want to get where I'm comfortable, where it's going to be an easy path to make it to the classic because if I go to Gunnersville and come in, 60th place we're gonna be on the classic cut line and i'm gonna have to catch them in the next three so i really want to do good in the first two and where i can kind of coast into the classic and not have a ton of pressure on the last two okay those are all my questions that's all you got well i had questions about your rods but you kind of already talked about them well ask them what is it 
I was gonna say, uh, what have you been doing in your off time? Uh, building them dang rods and uh, playing poker. <laughs> and how many rods have you built in the last two weeks? Uh, in the last two weeks, I have built one, two, three. I've built like three from scratch, maybe four. And I ha I'm, I'm going to build two more. And I have repaired a bunch of other ones. Um, I, I didn't have my guide spacing exactly correct on my seven foot six rods. They were pretty good, but now I have went back and fix my guide spacing to where I have I, what I feel like is optimal guide spacing for those rods. My line never touches the blank all the way down it. So I had to go, I went and fixed that and tried to just make some better changes to stuff. But for the most part, I'm only going to end up building like five or six rods for this Southern swing. Okay. So do you want to talk about your new jig or do you not want to talk about that on video? Yeah. I mean, it, I'll tell you exactly what it's going to be. It's what it's going to be is a leave on the front deck all year long casting jig it, that's what i've been doing for a while and there's a certain profile that i like in a jig the problem is it's very difficult to get the correct hook so we have finally dialed in the correct hook the correct head shape and we've got a, a jig that's going to be relatively compact and it's going to be something you can throw in super heavy cover and you can use a seven foot three heavy rod or bigger because it's going to have a super stout gamakatsu hook in it so what it is it's going to be kind of a finessier jig with a beefy hook in it so you have no problems getting fish out of cover and it's going to be you know a great little bit smaller presentation it's not going to be a huge bulky flipping jig over there at uh, untamed we've already got a couple of those and we're coming out with another big flipping jig which is going to be really cool for fishing around vegetation but for the most part it's just going to be a smaller compact jig with a great hook in it so you don't have to worry about bending it over and the problem that i've always had with using the finessier jigs is I'm using a half ounce jig and I'm really trying to throw that sucker underneath the dock. A lot of times I'm trying to skip it 30 or 40 foot on some of these docks I'm fishing. And if you hit a post or a pole, what will actually happen is it'll bend the entire hook around. Like it'll literally bend the hook closed. And I actually lost a three and a half pounder. He bit four times. He bit my jig four times not long ago. And I couldn't hook him because my, my hook was literally bent around in a circle. From where i hit a concrete pose underneath this dock and i i got the bite set the hook he followed it to the surface he ate it two or three more times right at the trolling motor and i couldn't hook him i looked at my hook bent it back out and couldn't get him to bite again so that cost me so we had to instantly try to remedy that remedy that and that's what we have done with this new jig so pretty excited about that okay leave a like leave a comment that's it leave a like leave a comment hit that subscribe button we're about to hit the road for a like a month and a half straight so if you don't want to miss anything uh, subscribe turn the alerts on gonna be some pretty cool videos y'all know i like hard hook sets and trying to catch some big large mouth bass so that's the goal for the rest of the year you don't want to miss it oh, broke him off that was an eight pounder too i promise you it was i seen him i seen him roll on it